In this video, we're going to use the principles of the Laplace transform to try and solve a second order differential equation. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you've already watched our videos where we introduced the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform, as well as the video where we look at a, an example involving a single order or first order differential equation. Uh, but in this video, we're going to jump straight in. We're going to use some of those same principles uh, to solve a second order differential equation that looks like this. We have 3 d squared y over dx squared plus 4 dy by dx minus 4y equals 0. And let's suppose that we're also given the additional information that when x equals 0, y equals 0, and dy by dx equals 6. So what we have in this equation is a function in terms of y with respect to x. Uh, y is a function of x, as it were, and as x changes, y changes. Now, in our previous examples, we've usually handled functions in terms of, um, or with respect to t, um, in the time domain, as it were, when we've been applying the Laplace transform. So we might have seen dy by dt, for example, and here we have dy by dx, or d squared y by dx squared. Don't be alarmed by that. Um, the, the method that we're going to use is exactly the same, uh, but rather than t, we see x instead, but that doesn't change our process. In terms of process, we're going to follow the same four steps that we saw in a previous video. I'll just list them very quickly here. We'll not go through them, um, but we're going to follow these th same steps in order to solve um, our, our uh, second order differential equation here. So let's start by taking the Laplace transform of both sides, and we set that up like this. Um, we have the Laplace transform, and we enclose our function in these curly braces, and on the right-hand side we have the Laplace transform of zero as well. And what we can do is we can break that up into separate terms. So we have the Laplace transform of each term separately, like so. And... Similarly to previous examples as well, any constant coefficients we can pull outside of that transformation. So um, rather than the Laplace transform of 3 d squared y by dx squared, we now have the, the uh, 3 multiplied by the Laplace transform of d squared y by dx squared. Uh, we've taken the 3 outside, as it were. And same here, 4 uh, multiplied by the Laplace transform of dy by dx uh, minus 4 times the Laplace transform of y. And what we can do is then apply those transformations referring to our standard table um, that we see here. And in our case, um, the, the second differential um, transforms into something that looks like this, s squared f of s minus s f of zero minus df of 0 over dx, and um, our first differential, dy by dx, um, differentiates to sf of s minus f of 0. Remember when we're seeing um, things with respect to x, that's no different really than um, with respect to time. Um, our, ours is just notated with an x, but we're still using these same entries. And then finally, remembering that y is really a function of x, or a, a function of time in this particular table, but it's a function nonetheless, it's not a constant. We're just using what, what we see in the header here. Um, our function of x, in our case, becomes f of s. And so when we put all of that together, we'll see something like this. We have not forgetting those, those um, coefficients that we pulled outside, we have 3 s squared f of s minus s f of 0 minus df of 0 over dx plus 4 s f of s minus f of naught minus 4 f of s. And the Laplace transform of 0 is just 0, and so that's all equal to 0 there. Again, we mentioned this in our previous example, but we have our um, capital F to represent the function in the S domain, 
and we have our small letter f to represent the function in our time domain which will just become relevant in just a moment. We're going to take advantage of these um, small f uh, functions that are still in the time domain in just a moment. So now that we've completed step one, we've, we've applied the Laplace transform, we're going to insert our initial conditions because um, referring to these terms here, f of zero, our small f of zero and our d small f of zero over dx, these are still functions that are in the time domain. And what we can do is using the initial conditions we were given, we were given um, the information that x equals zero, um, y equals zero, and d y by dx equals six at the very beginning. And so what we mean by this when we say small f of zero, we're saying that our function in terms of time, remember small letter f is still in the time domain, and in our case it's the x domain, but that's the same thing. Um, our, our function in terms of x, as it were, um, at x equals zero. And so we're told that when x equals zero, y equals zero, and y in our case is our function of x. And so what we're really saying is here, when we say f of zero, what is the value of y when x equals zero, as it were? And the answer is zero. And so f of zero we can replace with zero. And df of zero by dx, well, what's the differential of our function of, of um, x um, when time equals zero? Well, we're told that when um, x equals zero, rather, not time, uh, we're told when x equals zero, the, the uh, differential dy by dx is equal to six. And so what we can do is make those substitutions in our formulation here. And so we now have something like this, three s squared f of s minus s zero now, because y equals zero when x equals zero, minus six, because dy by dx equals six when x equals zero, and uh, we're adding that to four times s f of s minus zero again, minus four f of s, remembering that that's all still equal to zero. Um, all of our terms multiplied by zero disappear, and so we have something a little bit simpler, looks like this, and we can multiply out, we've got one bracket there left at the left hand side, we can multiply those terms all by three. And so we now have three s squared f of s minus 18 plus four s f of s minus four f of s equals zero. So quite a complicated expression still. We're gonna hopefully uh, simplify that and draw out um, our common factor of f of s to get our, our function in the form f of s equals. So what we can do, first of all, is we can try to get all of the terms that involve f of s on the left-hand side of the equation and all of the terms that don't involve f of s on the right-hand side of the equation. And for us, that's easy. It's just a case of adding 18 to both sides. And so we have something that looks like this. And what we can do then is pull out this common factor of f of s. And so rather than um, what we have here, we now have f of s multiplied by 3s squared plus 4s minus 4. We've got that quadratic um, function there. And that's still equal to 18. Finally, we can rearrange uh, in terms of f of s. So we now have f of s equals 18 over that quadratic expression 3s squared plus 4s minus 4. Okay, so by this point, We've completed step three of those four steps that we saw initially. We've presented our equation rearranged for f of s. Now, this might not have looked a particularly easy thing to do, but really all we've done is substituted some values and rearranged. There's no uh, differentiation or integration required. This is one of the big advantages of the Laplace transform. We can just use these algebraic methods to solve. So now, uh, the bad news, we've got to perform the inverse Laplace transform. And to do this, we refer again to our 
uh, table of standard Laplace transforms here. And looking at what we have here, um, there's not a particularly clear um, solution that meets the requirements of our particular result. If we want to attempt the inverse Laplace transform, what we're going to need to do is to split our result into two separate terms. And this is what we know as partial fractions, which you might have come across before, but we'll see a, a, a brief method below. So what we have currently, this quadratic expression on the bottom of our denominator, is too complicated by the looks of it. It doesn't match any of the results in our table here. And so what I'm going to attempt to do is to break this into two separate fractions. And hopefully by doing that, um, we can get two separate terms that match um, simpler results from the table. So the way we're going to do that is to factorise that quadratic expression on the bottom here. And in our case, it'll look something like this. We'll have um, f of s is now equal to 18 over 3s minus 2 multiplied by s plus 2. And you can check this for yourself by multiplying out these brackets again. You should get back to the quadratic equation that we started with. Um, but the idea behind these partial fractions is we're going to separate into two separate terms altogether. Ideally, we want something that looks like this. We're going to have f of s is equal to what I'll call a for now. We don't know what this number is yet. a over 3s minus 2 plus what I'll call b over s plus 2. And notice these are two totally separate fractions added together here. And the way we're going to do this is by uh, using a method of partial fractions. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll write this out fully here. We'll say that we have... Um, 18 over 3s minus 2 multiplied by s plus 2. That's where we're at at the minute. And this is where we want to end up, uh, what we just saw there. a over 3s minus 2 plus b over s plus 2. And the way that we're going to do this, uh, find these values of, of a and b, is to multiply our whole equation by the original denominator on the left-hand side here. And so on the left-hand side, that will disappear. We're multiplying by all of this, 3s minus 2, s plus 2. And what we'll find is on the right-hand side, um, this is this is going to be a, uh, multiplied by both of our um, hypothetical fractions here. We're going to end up with 3s minus 2, s plus 2, a, um, over 3s minus 2. And that's added to 3s minus 2, s plus 2, b, over s plus 2. And we're just left with 18 now on the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side, hopefully you can see that um, in either of these fractions here, one of these brackets is going to cancel. Um, either the 3s minus 2 bracket will cancel or the s plus 2 will cancel. Um, and so we're left with this. We're left with 18 equals s plus 2a plus 3s minus 2b. This is starting to look a little bit simpler, but we still don't know the values of a or b. And so what we're going to do to find these is we're going to revisit this quadratic equation that we, we did have on the denominator, um, 3s minus 2, s plus 2. And we're going to suppose that that's equal to 0, and we're going to find the roots of our quadratic expression here. Um, in our case s is either going to be equal to two-thirds or s is going to be equal to minus two if we're going to satisfy um, this, this, um, these multiplied brackets being equal to zero. And using these roots, we're going to substitute these roots into our expression that we found uh, above here. And we're going to do this twice. We're going to do this for each of our two cases that we have um, for these two different roots we found. So in the first instance, if f, if s, sorry, was equal to two thirds, we would have something that looks like this. Uh, 18 is equal to two thirds plus two a plus three multiplied by two thirds uh, minus two b. And that simplifies to 18 equals um, 2 and 2 thirds a plus 0 b because um, 
3 times 2 thirds is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. And so finally we have a is equal to uh, 18 over 2 and 2 thirds, if we want to arrange it like that, or um, 27 over 4. We'll keep it as a, as a, um, a rational number in fractional form rather than rounding any decimals. Uh, so there's our value for a. And similarly, we had two roots. Uh, that was one of them. If the, uh, the other case was true, s equals minus 2, we have something that looks like this. 18 equals minus 2 plus 2a plus 3 times minus 2 uh, minus 2b. And that simplifies down to 18 equals 0a minus 8b. And in that case, b is equal to minus 18 over 8 or uh, minus 9 over 4. So now we know that a is equal to 27 over 4 and b is equal to minus 9 over 4. And so we can complete our partial fractions. If you remember, we set up these uh, placeholder terms a and b originally and we now know the values of a and b so we have something that looks like this and that's not very tidy a, a fraction as a as a um, numerator of a fraction and so we can tidy that up a little bit um, and arrange it like so okay um, back to Laplace transforms because this little detour through partial fractions was a little bit unfortunate uh, not all solutions will require the use of partial fractions. We might have found a value in the table uh, straight away and not had to do that. So that's a bit unfortunate, but here we are. We now have two simpler terms that hopefully correspond with terms that are in our table. And so what we can see is that if we refer to the entries for exponential growth and exponential decay, we can hopefully now see some similarities. Let's do a little bit more work to get those um, in the right form. The first thing I don't like is this 3s term here. I would rather that was just s uh, by itself in that bracket. And so rather than 3s, we're going to divide basically by 3. Um, and we'll end up with, with s rather than 3s. Um, 2 or minus 2 rather is now minus 2 over 3 because we've divided the denominator by 3 we also have to divide the numerator by 3 as well so 27 becomes 9 and so now we have 9 over 4 s minus 2 thirds um, minus 9 over 4 s plus 2 I've not changed that second fraction yet what we can then do is we can pull out a constant coefficient out of each of these fractions. And in both of these cases, it's going to be 9 over 4. So we now have 9 over 4, uh, 1 over s minus 2 thirds, minus 9 over 4, 1 over s plus 2. And remembering we can leave these coefficients outside of the inverse transform, let's apply these inverse transforms now and so f of s is now going to become f of x and we do that by saying that that's 9 over 4 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2 thirds minus 9 over 4 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2 and if you refer to our table um, where these uh, terms here represent a then these correspond with 9 over 4 a to the 2 thirds x minus 9 over 4 e to the minus 2x. And so what we have here is our solution for f of x. And remember that f of x, our function of x, was, was y. And y was a function of x. And so what we're really seeing here is y equals um, this expression as well. So I hope you found this video useful to see how we can use the principles of Laplace transforms to solve a second order differential equation.